Hi, Nick from Patchworks here, and today I'm excited to preview the Novation Circuit tracks, which is uh, the successor to the Novation Circuit. And you can already see it looks very similar to the Novation Circuit, but has that updated look, which I'm a, I'm a very big fan of. We've got sharper, sleeker corners here. We have the new pads that are found on the new Launch Pad series. Um, still, we got the endless encoders up here, but now they're actually labeled. And you can see some different like workflow changes that I'll, I'll go through when I'm doing the overview there. But, you know, the front of the panel looking good, but I actually want to pop it up and show you the back to see what we're working with there. Because for a groove box of this size, it actually gives you a lot of good inputs and outputs. Okay, so when we look at the back of the unit here, I'll just do a quick overview. We got a little power button there. Just hold down for you a few seconds, turn it on. USB-C connector it does come with the cable, but more things are moving to USB-C, and I love that it does have that easy to for me to recharge, easy for me to hook up to my MacBook. Awesome. Micro SD, which you actually don't need to run the unit, but it helps you back up your, your projects and your packs. Full-size MIDI ports, which is luxurious. I love it because usually we'll see, we're seeing dongles on groove boxes and smaller devices. So you kind of have to see if it's type A, type B or whatever. Now on this, you just got the MIDI DIN ports right there in, out, through, and you know, out because you're going to be sequencing other, or you can sequence other gear using this, which is great. It uses the same sort of sequencing capabilities as the old launch, uh, as the old uh, circuit and like the new Launchpad Mark III. And if you want to drive it with other MIDI devices, but these pads are great, honestly. I don't foresee me ever really using that. Sync input, so you can synchronize it with other groove box and gear, such as Folkas, pocket operators, even modular. It just looks for an analog clock signal. We have quarter inch outputs here, um, two mono pair to create that stereo uh, signal that you could plug into a mixer, a pair of monitors, whatever, your DAW. Uh, eighth inch headphone output just for popping in some headphones, sit on the couch, playing around with this thing. And then uh, quarter inch inputs, which allows you to pass your next signal through this to run it through the effects or the side chain to kind of act as like an end of chain master effects unit for some of your other devices that may you may want to like play along with this thing. Okay, so when you turn on the circuit tracks, which again, as I mentioned, has a built-in battery. There's only one cable going out and that's to our mixer so you could hear the thing, but very low profile, very minimal, but it has some pre-made projects, which you could hold down projects, listen to the different demos, but I went ahead and clicked a new project. So we're starting with a fresh slate. And you know, when we look at kind of what this thing has, we get two synth tracks, both can be polyphonic and we have a number of presets that we could choose from and customize on the computer if we wish. Two MIDI tracks uh, with CC controls that these knobs can do. And then we have four drum tracks, which share um, kind of the same drum kit. Like each track can play one sound at a time. And if so, get all those sounds. And then we have one kind of the same sounds per drum kit. Um, I'm going to just assign these really quickly to these sounds because once we get this set up in the way that we like, when I hit expand here, now we we could actually play the drums at the same time because here the drums will kind of steal each other's voices, but it's great because then you could actually change drum sounds per step. And I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. There's just a lot of cool workflow features. So just starting out with the synth engine, if you're familiar with like the Novation workflow, um, they just like on the launch pad mark three that I talked about a few months ago We have the sequencer here up top, which is a 16 step sequencer uh, Actually 32 step, but we see 16 at a time. So um, and on the bottom here. We have our keyboard which uh, Where is already pre-tuned to a scale if I hold down the scale button here You could see exactly that we're playing a minor scale. Uh, these are kind of your uh, flats and these are your white keys and these are your different scale modes very easy to switch between them i like minor we'll stick with that if we want more if we want to go up and down just hit up and down change octaves easy all right so now we'll actually start building the sequence uh there's two different ways we could do this we could either use the step sequencer here up top and manually put in the notes which i'm going to do first or we can live record it while the loop is playing, which right now we don't have anything. I could turn on a click and play against it, but I can select my note, my C, and anywhere I want, I can just 
click this and start placing my notes. So got to see there, 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 and there. When I hit play, cool. So we already start this pattern on this particular synth track, synth track one. When I go to my patterns, that's where it's saved. If I go to another pattern, got it. I already have something on one of these patterns here. Um, but that's how you switch between the patterns. And when you go back to this page, this will show you your active pattern. So let's go back to this. There's that. Let's record some stuff into it. Boom, 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 boom. Oops. Let's change that note right there. Okay. Yeah, since this is a monophonic sound, you saw me actually trying to punch in some notes there and it didn't take to the sequencer since it is monophonic and that's okay. So we do have that one note there. Now what I want to do is kind of make a, kind of an A and a B part. So this is my A. I can copy this pretty easily here. So I'm on my pattern screen. I hold duplicate, click on the pattern, it turns green, and then now this is white. That's where it pasted it to. So now when I go to my patterns, So this one, I could just change these notes by holding them down and just punching them in manually like this. So now we can bounce between the two. And actually, I, I kind of had them both pressed at the same time. Allows you to pattern chain. Cool. So that's, you know, in this case, I actually like the synth sound that it was playing. I didn't change any of these parameters, but oftentimes that's not the case. And I'll, I'll show you on synth two. Here on synth two, that's actually a pleasant note, but you know, these different parameters up here allow you to quickly change the sound. So we have things like filter frequency, some modulation, which sounds like detune here. Uh, change the filter envelope, so. Here, kind of doing a bit of sweeping there, play around with the amp envelope to change kind of the, the sound. So these are like nice general features that are gonna let me dial in my sound pretty quickly. But if I wanna change the sound completely, I just hold down preset and here are my bank of different sounds. And it's nice because as you hold down the thing, the button, you can actually hear it audition those sounds. I like that, but I think it may have a little too much resonance. Uh, it just kind of has a bright timbre, so let's keep on che checking out some of these presets. Oh, I love that. Oh, cool. So let's record something else onto it. And so, if we wanted to change, you know, over here, some of these parameters, over here you saw that I'm able to like turn these knobs while it's playing and it turns red. And that that's actually allowing me to record some of these parameters to the sequencer. And they don't commit until I hit record and then it commits in. So you can do some jamming on the parameters themselves. Um, so we got two parts going there and the only thing that we need is some drums, right? So I'm going to just tap in the drums myself. Um, I could either do it here in this mode, but again, these are monophonic tracks. I don't, I wanna actually have like a kick and a snare or a hi-hat play at once. So if I hit expand, I get this, allows me to have that four voice uh, drum polyphony going. So um, when I hit play. Now we got a nice little groove going on there. Um, some other things that you could do pretty easily is one, you know, if I wanted, wanted to throw some other sounds in here. So the way that this works too, watch this. When I hit play, right now we got that kick going. As soon as I change this, these, these pads, when I do that manual drum in, aren't setting this particular sound to those pads. So I could, hit this and it'll actually switch the sample over completely. If I wanted to commit those sounds, I could hold down this particular sample and then click those. And now it's gonna just give me those. And now when I click here, I'm free to do other sort of sample stuff. So let's get that going right there. 
Again, I just want to go over some workflow stuff because I, I really do like this workflow. That was not on the beat that I wanted it. And I know that this was the pad that I wanted to use, but say if I change this over here and I listen to this. I, I can hold this down and it'll show me, it'll be lit up red which pad it is, but it's pretty easy to just hit duplicate again. So I'll hold down duplicate, hit this, paste it over there, and then clear this, boom. Actually clear, then that. Order of operations doesn't matter. Okay, cool, I like that. Um, and then now on the old circuit, one of the uh, main buttons was side chain, but now the side chain is actually, if I hold down shift and effects, it's down here. So shift effects, and we have our side chain. You pick your side chain um, source, which usually when you side chain, it's gonna be the kick. So drum one is my kick, cool. This is for your synth tracks and this is for your drum tracks, so. So that's like a really easy way to kind of get that kind of produced sound going. Kind of, you know, side chaining is a very um, prominent effect that people use in modern production and it does kind of make things sound a little less flat and more exciting. And it is cool that they allow you just to use that um, as is. So yeah, we saw the side chain, but now let's see how we actually use these effects. And these are send effects. These are effects that all these different uh, synth uh, audio tracks and drum tracks are gonna be sent to. And right now you send by turning up these knobs. So this is for one, two, uh, I think these are your external inputs and then uh, your drum tracks. So um, hi-hat, let's get some delay on that hi-hat. And actually let's make that side chain less intense. Oops. Okay. So effects. My hi-hat's gonna be this one. You get ready to hear it. And so just playing around with those allows you to do these different subdivisions, different lanes, different kind of responses on those. If we wanna start playing around with the reverb, these are your different reverb settings. So you can hear the bass kind of hit with that reverb, the pads with the reverb. And actually, so let's, it sounded kind of chaotic, right? Let's go into our mixer and just, we could actually do quick mutes, which is great, right? So I want to hear that reverb on the synth too. So I could just hold down mixer and these are my kind of quick mutes on my tracks. Which I love playing with mutes and on mixers as a way to perform. Like that's a good way to take a 16 bar loop like this and really get variation on it. Um, but yeah, let's just, I just wanted to kind of mute and solo on that uh, synth track to hear those different reverbs. Okay. So this is kind of like, the way that I view it is like kind of more subtle. Because now we can hear that, that the K time keeps on like, getting longer and longer, you know? We can start just sending everything through it. Very performative little device, I love it. Um, okay, again on the mixer too, you know, I was actually kind of hearing that, that that sound was a little, kind of wasn't uh, coming through quite as much, the synth sound, so I could turn everything else down just a little bit. And I had still cutting through. Yeah, again, it's all about these different menus, color coding, everything lines up. Um, and then, yeah, right now we're just kind of playing around with these patterns, but you do have two pages worth of patterns that you could chain and scene, like put on scenes. That's a little deeper than this video is going to go into. And we do have other sort of things going on here where on these steps, if I wanted to change, say, the velocity, I could hold this down and this is the amount of velocity per step. So different parameters that you would expect to be able to modulate, like velocity, gate length, even probability is able to do it here because... You know, I, and I maybe, maybe I don't want some of these notes to hit all the time. I could just change the probability by clicking on the step and then changing it. And this is the amount that they would be, be triggered. Right now it's muted, so we can't actually hear it or it's really low. Yeah, so that's just a basic overview. Um, we could, we had that on this project. Um, the project is kind of the, all those patterns and the synth sounds, um, drum sounds and all that. Um, you could have tons of projects per pack and you could have eight, 16, what is it? Eight patterns per uh, project and scenes that change between those. Um, yeah, but other than that, it's a pretty, uh, 
pretty awesome, straightforward little groove box. Like I've enjoyed playing around with it. It's really easy to get up and running and, and start programming because pretty much the interface is all you get. There's no screens here. And so sequencing up front, sounds are all loaded in, fantastic. Um, yeah, so if you have any more questions about this, we're actually gonna be hosting a live stream uh, later in March, March 3rd at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time with Enrique Martinez. And he's much more of an expert than I am here. I've, I've spent a, a few, uh, like a week or so playing around and getting to know this, but uh, if you haven't seen Enrique demo things, he's a wizard. So make sure you tune into that. And we'll be opening up our pre-order page, so check our website to see how you can reserve one of these if you are interested. And like always, feel free to reach out either via email, info at patchworks.com, or come into the store or call. Thank you so much, and uh, yeah, have fun. I'd like to see what y'all are doing with your different groove boxes like the circuit tracks. Mm -hmm.